Welcome to the Daily Word for Pentecost. Today's reading is from the Book of Tobit, chapter eleven, verses five to fifteen. Meanwhile, Anna sat looking intently down the road by which her son would come. When she caught sight of him coming, she said to his father, "Look, your son is coming, and the man who went with him." Raphael said to Tobias. Before he had approached his father, I know that his eyes will be opened. Smear the gall of the fish on his eyes. The medicine will make the white films shrink and peel off from his eyes, and your father will regain his sight and see the light. Then Anna ran up to her son and threw her arms around him, saying, "Now that I have seen you, my child, I am ready to die." And she wept. Then Tobit got up and came stumbling out through the courtyard door. Tobias went up to him with the gall of the fish in his hands, and holding him firmly, he blew into his eyes, saying, "Take courage, father." With this, he applied the medicine on his eyes, and it made them smart. Next, with both his hands. He peeled off the white films from the corner of his eyes. Then Tobit saw his son and threw his arms around him, and he wept and said to him, "I see you, my son, the light of my eyes." Then he said, "Blessed be God, and blessed be His great name, and blessed be all His holy angels. May His holy name be blessed throughout all the ages." Though he afflict me, he has made mercy upon me. Now I see my son Tobias. So Tobit went in rejoicing and praising God at the top of his voice. Tobias reported to his father that his journey has been successful, that he had brought the money, that he had married Raghu's daughter Sarah, and that she was indeed on her way there, very near to the gate. Of Nineveh, this is the word of the Lord. Persistence in faith. Today's reading is the last part of the book of Tobit, and it's also a passage of full expectation. When Tobias, the son of Tobit, returns from the mission initiated by his father, Tobias's journey began when his father felt that he would die soon, and hoped that Tobias would get back the ten talents in trust with Gabriel in the past, so that the lives of his wife and son would be secure. Just when Tobit thought this arrangement would be the only luck in his misfortune, God's arrangement and grace surpasses what he and his son expected. When Tobias set off, God had prepared for him the best guide in the angel Raphael. On the way, Raphael guided Tobias to grasp a large fish from the Tigris River, and took out the key medicine: fish gall, heart, and liver. The heart and liver of the fish enabled him to repel demons, and to meet Sarah, the partner that God had prepared for him. The gall of the fish, as mentioned in today's reading, would cure Tobit's eyes and allow him to see the light again. We see a godly man, Tobit, thinking that he has little time left, but still holding on to his faith, instructing his son to keep the covenant made by them with God in past generations, acting righteously and doing no evil. Therefore, one life affects another life, and passes on from generation to generation. Tobias inherits his father's piety, so that his entire journey is protected and graced by God, bringing unexpected blessings to their family. Are there good rewards for the righteous? Do good people necessarily receive blessings? Perhaps this belief is questioned and challenged in our society today, but the Book of Tobit illustrates that unfailing faith will reap its own rewards. 
It shows the faith of a Jew who was exiled and persecuted many times, but still adhered to his belief. In Tobit's experience, the suffering of blindness causes him and his family to experience hardships, and it's not easy for them to live through these. Yet his trust and loyalty to God remains. His piety to God is not because of the benefits that God might give him, but because he knows that no matter what happens, the creator of heaven and earth should be praised. In verse 14 he says, Blessed be God, though he afflicted me. Whether the good or the righteous will ultimately have their reward, we can only believe, because we have not reached the end of the universe or the end of the world. Maintaining our belief is a test of faith. Yet the book of Tobit is consistent with the central theme of wisdom literature in the Bible. Instead of being led by the experience of life, it is better to hold the hand of God our Heavenly Father and follow God's plan wholeheartedly. We may feel that acts of kindness may not bring about the desired effect and that preaching may seem to be less than convincing. We may feel similar to Tobit in not knowing when we will be able to see the light. However, we must not be discouraged. We must hold on to our faith. We must never forget God in difficult times, and we must ask God to give us unshakable faith in our trials. May we see the light, like Tobit, soon. A time for reflection. Do we sincerely believe in Psalm 1, which says, Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. Are we consistent in faith in the midst of difficult times? Are we saying good words and doing good deeds because of the utilitarian calculation that good people get good rewards? Or do we believe from the bottom of our heart that it is our duty to do and be good in the eyes of the Lord? Can we learn to declare, like Tobit, Blessed be God, though he afflicted me? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, without your providence, no one can sustain their living, working, and well-being. We humbly beseech you, Lord, to guide and direct us through the Holy Spirit, so that we may never forget you in times of distress and trouble. But remember that our thoughts, our works, and our deeds are known to you alone. This we ask through our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen.